Good day, grade 11 STEM students. Welcome to the HP Classroom. In this video, we will be able to evaluate series in sigma notation form by using its sigma notation properties and sigma notation formulas. So we have four properties indicated as our guide. And we also have four formulas, which are, which are true if it's if the index of summation starts at one. So let's discuss this briefly. For the first property, if a certain variable f of i has a coefficient c other than one, if we need to get its sum. We need to set aside first or pull out C and then solve for the summation of f of i from m to n. If we have two functions or two terms, f of i and g of i, and we need to get the sum from m to n, we can distribute the summation for each term and then add or subtract them afterwards. So if we have this need to get the summation of the constant, which starts at a certain value m to n, but m is not, it's okay that it does not start with 1. So the formula will be c times the, the upper limit minus the lower limit plus 1. If we have, we need to get the sum of the square of a binomial from m to n, which is simply expand the square of binomial and distribute the summation for uh, the summation to each of the terms and then adding them or subtracting them together to get the sum. So if for the sigma notation formulas, if we have a constant which starts from 1 until c, we just need to multiply them by the upper limit. And if we have a certain variable i, we need to multiply it by the upper limit times its n plus 1 over 2. If we have 1 squared, we have n times n plus 1 times 2 n plus 1 all over 6. And for the cube of i, we need to get the summation. It's just the square of n times n plus 1 over 2, just like the second formula. And or we have n squared times n plus the square of n plus 1 over 4. So let's have some examples. For the examples, we need to find the sum of the following series in sigma notation. So we have this given, and we need to answer this by using our summation properties and formulas. So let's answer number one. We have the summation of 5i from i, which is 1, to, until 6. What do we need to do here is just use the properties and formulas applicable to get the sum of this series in sigma notation. So as we go back to the guide, We can observe that we have our f of i, which is a variable, and then we have the coefficient just before it. So what we need to do is to pull out 5 and solve first for the summation of i from i is equal to 1 to 6. We have... 5, then put summation sign, then copy i, put index of summation, lower and upper limit, and then let's solve. So since the sum summation i starts from 1 to 6, we can solve it by using the sigma notation formula, which is this one, second one. So we have summation of i 
m is equal to 1 to n. So we just need the upper limit, then multiply it by n plus 1, then divide it by 2. So here's the proof why we need to do this. So if we will list down summation of i from 1 to 6, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, and then another sum is the, its reverse form, and if we will be adding them all together, we have 2s and 6 sevens in here. So we have 6 times 7, then divide both sides by s to get the sum, and we have our sum is 21. And we can see that 6 is the upper limit of the summation. And then 7 is, we just added 1 by the upper limit. And then we divide it by 2. So that is a shortcut way of how to get the sum of a certain variable from 1 to n. So we have 6 times 6 plus 1 is 7. over 2 equals we need to clear out the space so we have 5 times 6 times 7 I included it here in the numerator and then by simplifying our sum is 105 because we have 5 times 3 times 7. For number 2, we have summation of 10 from i is equal to 3 to 8. You can see that this is a constant. And if we will go back to the guide, we need to choose either of these two properties or formulas. So since this one, And the one below, it starts from 1 to n, and this one did not start. So we will consider the some sigma notation property, which is c is equal to n minus m plus 1. Since it does not start from 1. So simply copy the constant. 10 times the upper limit, which is 8 in this case, minus the lower limit, which is not equal to 1. So that is 3. Okay. Plus 1. So our sum will be Ten times eight minus three plus one is six. So our sum is sixty. However, if i is equal to one with the same upper limit, so we will use the second. 1, which is a sigma notation formula, C, C times the upper limit, which is N. I will just arrange it here. Since it does not fit the screen. Okay, there. We'll simply multiply the constant by the number of the upper limit. So we have 10. times the upper limit, which is 8, which is the sum is equal to 80. For the third example, we have the summation of 3k minus 4 from k is equal to 1 to 3. So in here, there is a combination of properties and formulas to be used. But the property here is we have 
two given terms or binomial that we need to get the sum. So for this one, we, need just, we just need to substitute the summation notation to both terms. So since 3k looks like the first property, so we will write it as 3, the summation of k from, uh, from k equals 1 to 3. Then copy the sign of the second term, then we have summation of 4 from k is equal to 1 to 3. And then let's evaluate. We have 3. Then since k is a variable, we need to use this one. n times n plus 1 over 2. Our upper limit is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4 divided by 2, subtracted by, since it starts with 1, so we have the formula constant times the upper limit, 4 times 3. Let's evaluate. So we have 4 divided by 2 is 2. 3 times 3 times 2 is 18 minus 4 times 3 is 12. The answer is 6. So that's the sum of the summation. For the fourth given, we have the square of the binomial k, 2k plus 3, from 1 to 4. Looking at the sigma notation properties, we need to expand the square of binomial and then distribute the summation in order to get the sum. We need to get to get its uh, to get its product. So we have summation of from one to to four of the quadratic trinomial 4k squared plus 12k plus 9. And distribute the summation to, to the terms. We have 4 times the summation of k squared from 1 to 4 plus factor out 12. So we have 12 times the summation of k from 1 to 4 plus the summation of 9 from k is equal to 1 to 4. Then let's evaluate. We have 4 times k squared, summation of k squared, so we have 4 times we need to get the upper limit uh, here and then put it in this formula for i squared. So we will start with our upper limit. Our upper limit here is 4. So 4 times 4 times 4 plus 1, which is 5, 2n plus 1 is 9 divided by 6 plus 12 times the summation of k. We have 12 times. The upper limit, which is 4, then add it by 1, which is 5, divided by 2, plus the constant, since it starts with 1, 
we just need to multiply them by the upper limit, 9 times 4. Then, let's add them all together. Then, we can simplify this one. And then, this one, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So, we have 4 times 2 times 5 times 3 is equal to 120 plus 6 times 4 times 5 which is also equal to 120 plus 9 times 4 which is 36 so our sum is equal to 276 For number 5, we have summation of j squared from j is equal to 1 to 10. And we will use this formula to answer this given. We just need the value of the upper limit and substitute it to this formula. So, since our n is equal to 10, so we have 10 times 10 plus 1, which is 11, times 2 times 10, which is 20, plus 1. Divided by 6. Then simplify 10 times 11 times 20 plus 1, 21 divided by 6. Then after sim simplifying, our answer will be 5 times 11 times 7, which is 385. We do not need to add them so many times anymore. Just plug in the formula and you'll get the answer. For the last example, we have the summation of j cubed from j is equal to 1 until 10. Again, instead of expanding, we just need to use the given formula. The formula is the squared of n times n times 1 over 4 over 2 or I simply prefer, prefer n squared times the squared of n plus 1 over 4. So get the upper limit which is 10 squared times 10 plus 1 squared then divided by 4. After simplifying, we have 10, uh, I mean 10 squared, which is 100, and 10 plus 1, which is 11. Then getting its squared is 121, and then divided by 4. 100 divided by 4 is 25. 25 times 112 is equal to 3,525. And that's the sum. And that's how you get the sum of a series in sigma notation.